On today's episode of Let's Wine About It, I will be making strawberry wine with my dear, sweet friend, Ryan. Hello. <laughs> so, Ryan, what's the very first thing you want to do when making any kind of wine? Well, Miles, I think we have to practice proper sanitation. And can you tell me exactly what that means because it's not clear to me? When you practice proper sanitation, you kill the bacteria, you kill the mold, and all of that stuff can affect the fermentation of your wine. That's damn right, Ryan. Good uh, work. Yeah. <laughs> so let me go ahead and grab the Star Sand Sanitizer. You can buy it on Amazon. There's a link in the description, but I want to show it to you. This is what Star Sand Sanitizer looks like. Do you see it? It says star sand. <laughs> that means this is right. Because that's the right one. Um, so what you do is you combine about a fourth an ounce, not, not, it's not very much, into a gallon of water. You mix it all up, and then you dunk all of the equipment and things you're going to be using today in that. It kills the bacteria, as Ryan astutely pointed out. And then you lay it out on paper towels. You don't actually dry it with the paper towels because that would undo the sanitation. You let it air dry. So do that, and once you've done that, come on back. The next step, and the most time-intensive step, is prepping our ingredients. For this recipe that I'll be teaching you, you will need seven pounds of strawberries. <laughs> this is seven pounds. Isn't that a lot of strawberries? That is a lot. I will say though, it doesn't look like seven pounds, but it does feel like it as it should. <laughs> it weighs seven pounds, exactly. We actually had to pour off a lot of the juice because the first thing you wanna do with your seven pounds of strawberries to, to prep is freeze them because water expands when it freezes. So when you freeze the fruit, you break down the cell walls in that fruit, allowing more juice to be re released when we eventually mash it all up. So I did that. Ryan didn't do it, because no. Ryan sucks. No. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we wanna go ahead and cut off the stems of the strawberries. And after they've thawed, and it, it takes like a full day, it took like seven hours for these to thaw. So prepare yourself. Um, we want to cut off the stems because they would add too many bitter flavors to the wine. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to cut it off. Plus, who eats the stem? Ryan does. Kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. You oh. did it again, Miles. <laughs> you're you ruining... I, I'm the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're putting greens in here. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry. I'm moist. Oh, sure. Ryan! We don't say that word on this show. Bro, these are moist strawberries. I I'm gonna gotta, stab you with my it. knife. How horrifying would that be? <laughs> Did he just stab me on camera? Yeah. And you just don't upload it? This was just a ploy to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you in my garage here with knives. <laughs> There's no let's whine about it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no. And then all the red juice is just strawberry juice. <laughs> oh, this is gonna take forever. Holy crap. Gee. How long did that take, Brian? It took quite a bit, but I think it was worth it. I think so too. So once you have your strawberries prepared, all the stems chopped off, you want to cut up three ounces of raisins. Weighed this out with a food scale. This is three ounces of raisins. Now, Ryan, can you tell us why we add raisins to our fermentation? No, you can't because I didn't tell him yet. He, no, I didn't. I, I would not know that. I wanted to see if he made something up. And that's okay that you didn't. We don't lie on this show. No. So <laughs> the reason you add raisins to wine is that strawberry wine, when it's made just from strawberries, comes out a little thin. If you've had a lot of wine, it's like a Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is really light bodied. Like a Malbec is really full bodied. The difference here is like skim milk versus whole milk. Whole milk is like a full bodied wine. Skim milk is like a light bodied wine. I don't want a really overly thin wine. I want it to be a little fuller. Raisins add that effect. So we're gonna add three ounces of raisins. All you need to do is chop them up. Not super finely, but just get them chopped up so that the yeast we eventually add into here can get to them. All right, once they're all chopped up, add them into whatever container you have your strawberries in. And then what you need to do is you need to seep two black tea bags. We're gonna be adding about a cup of tea, which has two, two tea bags in it, because what black tea adds to a fermentation to a wine is tannins. Tannin in wine is that bitter astringent taste, and it also is that like really drying effect in your mouth. So if you've ever like bitten into a black tea bag and then like it feels like all the saliva is absorbed, 
if your mouth gets really dry and it's bitter, that's like a ton of tannins. We don't want all those tannins, so we're not gonna be adding the actual tea bag, but a little bit of tannins adds some structure and like depth and complexity to a wine, and that's what I wanna go for. And Ryan, you knew that, right? You would've said I that. definitely knew that. It's yeah. just, I like the way Miles describes it. Yeah. It would've been kind of boring if I said it. Yeah, but. but my way with words is just really nice, you know? <laughs> so, go ahead and do that. Seep two black tea bags in hot water. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a brewing bag, that's what this is, and put it inside the two gallon fermenting bucket. Now, we're going to be making a gallon of wine, but I'm using a two gallon bucket because seven pounds of fruit is a lot of volume. That's a, that's a ton of fruit. And so if I were to put all that fruit into a one gallon fermenter, I'd only be able to get like half a gallon of water in there and you'd only end up with half a gallon of wine. So we're using a two gallon bucket for that reason. We're using a fermenting bag instead of just pouring all the fruit into here because it makes it easier to take all the pulp and mushed up stuff out in like a month when we go into the next stage. Just easier to do if you have a brewing bag. So that's, that's what we're doing. Ryan, mm. go ahead and pour it in. Let's go. Perfect. There we go. And no mess was made. That's right. So what we want to do now that it's in here, we want to mash it up. Now in previous videos when I did things like this, I'd use a potato masher. I have found a potato masher is incredibly inefficient. So Ryan, you're gonna, we're gonna mash it up with our hands. Did you know in Spain when they make wine, they use their feet to smash the grapes? Much as in like a lot of other places, but in Spain, it's like a tradition when you're making wine. Is it? Yes. Well, Ryan, I think the obvious conclusion here is to. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. I will not be putting my no, feet into this his wine. They're very gross. They're very gross. Yes. Okay, so just get in there, Ryan. I want you to have, have as much action as possible. I'll take my ring off. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> So I used organic strawberries. I read a little bit of research that those are gonna be better and taste better, and I think that's right. So they're more expensive, but it's worth it for that extra oomph that they give. It makes sense because they're smaller and the flavor is more packed. There you go. You know? that's, so I think that's what it is. That's the exact point that I was trying to make, but my words failed me. It's okay, I got you. Thanks, brother. You're welcome. So once your strawberries are sufficiently crushed up, what is our next step, Brian? We are gonna be adding Pectic enzyme. Can you tell me about that? What does pectic enzyme do? It improves clarity and juice yield in your wine. How does it do that? I'm not sure. This doesn't say, <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. I know it's an enzyme, so it's a catalyst for some sort of reaction. He is entirely correct. So pectic enzyme breaks down the gelatinous material, the fibrous material in fruit, known as pectin, so that the fruit releases more juice. It also reduces the hazy, cloudy appearance of wines as they ferment and age, and so it gets rid of what's called pectin haze. By breaking down carbohydrates into simple structures that don't reflect light, it makes it more transparent, which is obviously just an aesthetic concern, but it's nice. So we're gonna add half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme, and the ratio is half a teaspoon per gallon of wine, however much you're making. Excellent. Go ahead and give it a stir. I'm going to get my trusty spoon. Next, we're going to add the tea. And remember, the black tea that we're using is to add tannins to the wine. It's to add a little bit of a bite, a little bit of that astringent, bitter feeling. Not, not a lot, but enough to give it a greater depth and a greater complexity as a beverage. Because that's what we're going after, is a really nice beverage. So will you do the honors? I will pour it. The whole thing? All of it. Just not the tea bags. Perfect. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, once that's added in, you wanna get a sanitized jug or jar or any sort of large container and fill it with three-fourths of a gallon. As I said, we're going after a gallon of wine here. Now, from all that juice, there's probably about a fourth of a gallon of juice in here, maybe a little more. And so I'm not gonna add a full gallon because that would dilute the flavors too much. I'm only gonna add as much water as I need to bring it to about a gallon of liquid. All right, go for it, Ryan. All right. Brilliant. 
Now, Ryan, if you could tell the people, give them two interesting facts about you. Well, I lived in Spain for about four years, so most of my high school. Um, and then I moved over here to New Mexico. And that second fact is I was born in Italy. Though I wasn't raised there, um, I did go back to see my original birthplace in Naples, Italy. Do you have dual citizenship anywhere? Like I Spain? do not. Okay. I wish I did, but I didn't live there long enough uh, to, to get it. be a citizen. Because in other countries, you're not a citizen when you're born there. I did not know that. So the next thing you want to do is cut one lemon in half and then you're going to take both lemons and squeeze the juice into your brew. The reason we're going to add lemon juice is lemon juice is really acidic and acids in wine tend to create a little bit of tang, a little bit of like more mouthfeel, more structure to it. Much like the raisins we're adding and much like the black tea, increasing the acid is just one more way to make the beverage a little more complex. And I think that this addition of lemon juice will really help to add that like finishing touch. Perfect. Cool. And don't throw the rinds in here because that would just create way too much bitterness from the lemon rind. We just want the juice. Oh, need my spoon. So we're almost to the end. But before we go any further, weigh out two pounds of sugar. We're gonna be adding two pounds of white table sugar to our fermentation. The reason we're adding so much sugar is that alcohol happens when yeast consume sugar and then produce alcohol as a byproduct, as a result. Um, strawberries themselves have very little sugar in them. There's probably only like a quarter pound of sugar total in this, so that if you fermented it with just the sugars that are naturally occurring in here, you'd only get like a 4% alcohol by volume wine or cider, I guess. If you add two pounds of sugar, then if the yeast consume all of the sugars total, in here, you should end up with about a 13 to 14% alcohol by volume beverage. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we're adding so much sugar, is to elevate the alcohol of the wine. I forgot the actual science behind yeast turning sugar into alcohol. Mm -hmm. I learned it last year. Probably. Yeah, so it's just a process of a particular process of fermentation. Mm -hmm. The yeast replicate, and then once they've created a sufficient colony inside, they begin to consume the sugar, and they break it down into alcohol, ethanol, alcohol, and carbon dioxide gas, and they do that in equal parts. So over the course of five weeks as this ferments, the yeast will produce alcohol, but they also will produce carbon dioxide. And we're gonna need a way for that gas to escape, because if this were a closed container and you threw yeast in here, it would explode. We don't want that. So I will describe what to do in that case. So the last thing that we're gonna do, and this step you don't actually have to do if you're doing this at home, this is your first like fermentation project, is measure the density of the liquid using a hydrometer. The reason that you take a measurement at the very beginning to measure the density is that indirectly tells you the, the sugar content of your liquid. So if you just had water in here, this hydrometer would level out at 1.000. If you added a pound of sugar to that water, it would go up to 1.046. And if you added two, it'd go to 1.09 .09 or so. So it allows you to calculate with precision just how much sugar is in it. Now I, I know how much sugar is in it because I add it, but what we'll do then at, once the fermentation is complete is take a second reading. And that, if all the sugar has been consumed and it's gone, this should level out at 1.00 again. And then I can know with like precision what the alcohol content is in the wine. So it's just a way to take a little bit of the guesswork out of making wine. Go ahead and do exactly what I just did. There you go, Ryan. So this is at 1.070, which is lower than it should be. Two pounds of sugar in a gallon of liquid should increase the density to 1.090 or so. 
Okay, so I'm gonna add more sugar because it only came out to 1.07 now. And I attribute that to the fact that there's one and a fourth gallons of juice in here. So it's gonna take more sugar to get to the same density that you otherwise would in one gallon. Does that make sense? So we're gonna go ahead and take the brewing bag out because that was kind of getting in the way when we were stirring. And I'm gonna pour in three fourths a gallon of sugar, more. Okay, so Ryan has very carefully removed the brewing bag, put it in that bowl. This is weighed out again, three fourths of sugar, three fourths a pound of sugar. I'm gonna add it in. Mix it up. Yeah, it's a lot easier now that there's not a ginormous bag in the way. Just try and bag. <laughs> Looks like, like organs it's or something. Like yeah. Yeah. It's like a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take another measurement. It's like 1.089, which is still lower than I wanted, but honestly, that'll be okay. If this fermented out absolutely and completely every ounce of sugar, you'd get about 13% alcohol. Now I'm anticipating that the yeast will peter out a little soon, but as long as we get about 10%, I'm happy with that. So I'm not gonna increase it anymore. We're just gonna call it at 1.090 as the initial gravity reading. So, how has filming been today, Ryan? It's been pretty fun. Uh, we made, I hope it's gonna be good. It looks like it's gonna be good. I do, I, I hope it's gonna be good as well. Um, I'm really excited about that. So, the last thing we wanna do is add some yeast. I'm gonna be adding Fleischmann's bread yeast. Now, there's a lot of different yeasts that you can use, a lot of like wine-specific yeasts and strains that have been isolated and made by various companies. Fleischmann's active dry bread yeast works just fine. It has an alcohol tolerance of about 12 to 13%, meaning that when it generates that much alcohol, 12% alcohol by volume, the yeast die. Some yeast strains like champagne yeast go all the way to 20% alcohol by volume. That's too much alcohol to have a nice like flavored beverage, I yeah. think. A lot of people are like, I want as much alcohol as possible. I don't think that sounds balanced. This will make it probably a good even level. Yeah, and that's why we increase the tannins a little bit and the acid a little bit. And the idea with wine is to have alcohol, acids, tannins, all kind of in balance. So you're gonna add half a teaspoon of yeast. Ryan, would you care to do the honors? I will. And once you open it, put it in the refrigerator when you're done. That'll extend the lifespan. So the next thing we'll be doing is putting on the airlock. And this thing, it allows the carbon dioxide to come out, but it doesn't let any bacteria or oxygen to go in to mess with our wine. Or exactly. The, the last thing you want is to open this up in five weeks and see mold growing and realize that you have to just dump all this crap out. Because if you went the route that we did and bought organic strawberries and all that jazz, it's a very expensive batch of wine you're making, but it's worth it. <laughs> and now the fermentation is complete. Everything is together. Um, at this stage, you want to place this in a cool, dark environment. I keep mine on the floor of my closet and have the door shut. This will take about five weeks to ferment out completely. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Y we can't know exactly, but what I will do in five weeks is take this out, we'll open it up. I will take a reading with that hydrometer and if it measures like 1.000, that means all the sugar's been consumed and it's done. Now, sometimes various yeast strains peter out a little soon. Maybe it's 1.010 and there's some residual sugar. What I'll do then is take a measurement a week later, and if those two measurements are the same, it means the fermentation is done, the yeast are done. So, take this, put it in your closet, and in five weeks I'll show you what to do next. At that point, we will siphon it into a new container to help clarify it, and we'll do that a couple times as like, those chunks settle out and the wine becomes clear, and then at the end we'll bottle it. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us. It was us. a pleasure, thank you. Of course, very much appreciated. So thank you for watching, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.